The Department of Health reported nine new confirmed cases, patients 25 to 33, of the coronavirus 2019 COVID-19, on top of the four new cases, patients 21 to 24, announced yesterday evening, March 9, 2020. This brings the total number of confirmed cases in the country to 33. DOH also clarified that the 11 new cases announced earlier today are in fact new positive samples and not cases. Upon verification, DOH reported that two of the new positive samples received by the Epidemiology Bureau of DOH are repeat tests on samples taken from patients 7 and 8. The 13 new cases are admitted at various hospitals. Dr. Jose N. Rodriguez Memorial Hospital and Sanitarium for patient 21, Cardinal Santos Medical Center for patient 22, San Lazaro Hospital for patient 23, St. Luke's Medical Center, Quezon City for patient 24, New Clark City Quarantine Facility for patients 25 to 26, and the Medical City for patients 27 to 33, respectively. Of the 13 new cases, patients 21 to 24 are currently in stable condition. Patients 25 to 26 are asymptomatic. And statuses of patients 27 to 33 are for verification. The EB of the DOH is conducting comprehensive contact tracing activities for all cases. DOH is also in cl close coordination with local government units and Center for Health Development for the implementation of infection prevention and control measures at the local level. And the Philippine National Police and other government agencies and concerned stakeholders for identification and management of close contacts. With the increasing number of cases, I implore everyone to fully cooperate with us in investigation and contact tracing activities. Individuals with a known history of exposure and travel presenting with mild symptoms are advised to self-isolate and undergo home quarantine for 14 days. Those presenting severe and critical symptoms need to be immediately admitted to our health facilities. Please contact DOH and call the designated hotline at 028-651-7800, local 1149-1150. to for appropriate management and referral, our health secretary said. I would like again to remind everyone to please help us practice personal preventive measures such as proper hand, hand hygiene, cough etiquette, and social distancing. We also advise everyone to avoid visiting public places and or attending mass gatherings at this critical time. Only with your cooperation and support can we win our fight against COVID-19, our Health Secretary concluded. Thank you, uh, Assistant Secretary Verhere. We are now opening the floor for questions. Um, yes, uh, sir. Ma'am, from DCWB, Sam Nielsen po. Ma'am, a while ago, naglabas po kayo ng breaking news sa uh, inyong official Facebook page. 35 po yung ano na, uh, bilang natin sa positive sa coronavirus. Pakiklaro lang, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, we'd like to apologize for that uh, mistake uh, because uh, earlier than that time, sir, uh, there was this post coming from the health emergency meeting uh, coming from WHO or the World Health Organization wherein they initially reported the 35 cases. For us to be able to inform the public and the media that we have that information and it was supposed to be DOH uh, initially uh, issuing out this kind of numbers. We have to issue out this statement to inform everybody that there is this number and whatever the uh, WH who was mentioned, that number is what we have also. But upon verification now that we were trying to analyze the numbers and correlating it with the list of patients that we have, we found that the number that initially was reported to us were number of samples, this 11. And while we did our validation, we only found nine new cases. So now we are correcting it, and again, we apologize. We have 
uh, place down or tinanggal na po namin yung post namin for this 35. Para po maliwan, malinaw ngayon, this, uh, this now we are officially saying we have new nine cases, hindi po labing isa, sham lang po, total of 33 cases now in the Philippines for COVID-19. Sir Rafi and then the guy at the back. Asik, what does this mean? Uh, what have you found out based on the information that you've gathered? Are these um, cases related or linked to one another somehow? Or are they uh, isolated in different areas? Kasi po iba-ibang lugar sa Metro Manila. Uh, Rafi, actually, nung nakuha namin ito, wala pa kaming ganung kadaming ebidensya or information because we just got this up. Uh, this morning, no? Uh, mga alas 9 or alas G. So, ngayon po, pinapunta na namin lahat ng teams namin. Again, we have already expanded our teams uh, that uh, goes for investigation for these different cases. At yung pong impormasyon, makukuha pa namin pa isa-isa yan mamayang gabi. So, hindi pa ho namin masabi. Although, meron na ho tayo nakikita na Doon po sa ibang mga past na cases, nakikita na natin yung relasyon ng iba. No? Yung iba magka-partner sila, yung iba mag-asawa. So nakikita na po natin yan isa-isa ngayon. Ma'am, sorry, follow up lang po. Ano po ang protocol sa pag-quarantine uh, or yung, yung procedure sa mga condo? Kasi po may na-announce po ang uh, Quezon City Government kanina na meron pong positibo na nakatira sa isang condo. Ano po yun? Is, is everyone living in that condo subject to quarantine? No, sir. Uh, ganun pa rin ang ating protocol. No? Kung ano po yung protocol natin for uh, contact tracing, kung ano po yung uh, ginagawa nating batayan para sa contact tracing, yun pa rin. Kung halimbawa ikaw ay may direct interaction talaga doon sa taong nagpositibo, uh, nandoon ka doon sa perimeter na nung nagsisimptoma siya or he was symptomatic, you were there and interacting with him closely. Kung kasama ka sa isang kwarto na confined, kung kasama ka niya for the past 14 days before he got sick, and then you are part of those initial contacts that we need to investigate. Please uh, pass the mic to the gentleman at the back. Ay, asa, good afternoon. Johnson po from DZMM. Doon sa 33 cases na binabanggit po ninyo, pwede bang ma-specify natin nasaan yung big concentration ng mga pasyente? Big concentration? Nasaan po yung malaking bilang ng pasyente doon sa 33 positive cases? Nakakalat po, sir. Iba-ibang lugar tayo sa ngayon, uh, meron dito, no? So, hindi pa ho natin masabi kung pag naidagdag natin doon sa iba, because hindi pa rin ho namin nakukuha yung exact addresses ng ibang nadagdag kung ito ay magkakaroon ng malaking uh, porsyento sa isang lugar dito sa ating bansa o uh, ito ay nakakalat. No? We'll give it to you tomorrow. Ma'am, you mentioned that cases 25 and 26 are asymptomatics. So does it mean, ma'am, na ano, marami pang pwedeng positive na nandiyan na hindi pa nang nadedetect? Uh, Ma'am, ito po ay isang uh, sinasabing initial pa lang itong asymptomatic. We need to further or to probe further kung ano talaga nangyari. Kasi katulad po ng sabi natin ngayon, marami po sa ating mga kababayan maaring nakakaramdam ng mild symptoms. But because of alam po natin yung pag mild, minsan ipinagsasawalang bahala natin, so minsan hindi siya nare-report. Tinitignan pa po natin kung nangyari po ito dito sa patients 25 to 26 Considering na hindi naman natin nakikita yung viral load nila no kapag tinetest kung positibo o negatibo para malaman baka naman resolving na o nag-uumpisa pa lang yung sakit no nakuha natin kaya wala pa siyang symptoms. How far or how dear are we from declaring yung community transmission? We need to get all information by tonight so that we can readily analyze kung ma makakapagsabi tayo that there is sustained community transmission. Pangalawa, meron po tayong inaantay na gene sequencing na ginagawa natin ngayon dun sa mga samples no, ng ating mga pasyente na positibo para malaman natin talaga based on science, based on evidence, kung talagang may epidemiologic link ang bawat isa. May relasyon ang bawat isa. Doon natin lang natin malalaman kung meron tayong community transmission o wala. Yes. Ma'am, sorry. Uh, Ma'am, uh, Secretary Duque mentioned this morning that um, uh, it's, it's okay to go swimming this summer kasi yung virus na mamatay sa heat, anong, may nabago ba sa ebidensya? Um, yun pong mga ebidensya natin, of course, may mga kin uh, kinakalap pa rin ho natin at pinag-aaralan. So kung halimbawa po uh, sa mainit, 
yung iba pong mga sakit, no? Sinasabi kapag mainit, namamatay talaga. So, maaring maibase natin sa ganun uh, ang mga pananaw na ganyan na maaring mamatay uh, pagka mainit ang araw. Ma'am Aiko. Hello, Ma'am Aiko Miguel from UNTV. Ma'am, would just like to get details of it. Yung regarding sa you've mentioned na gene sequencing, FDA already issued a certificate of exemption sa test kit. Is it related to it po, Ma'am? Uh, the rapid test kits that FDA was uh, pertaining to uh, was, the ra uh, was the rapid test kits which was produced locally. Okay, ito po ay binigyan na ng certificate of exemption ng ating uh, Food and Drug Administration. So, ito pong rapid test kits, ginagamit po ito, it has a shorter turnaround time. Uh, it would give you around 45 minutes to 2 hours processing lang. No? Kaya gusto natin magkaroon ng ganito sa ating bansa para mapabilis at ma-extend din ang capacity ng laboratorio. Compared to gene sequencing, which is really studying the sequence of your the genetic makeup nung sa isang tao para malaman mo, no? halimbawa ikaw ay galing kang Taiwan, uh, doon ka nagkaroon ng kaso, kapag tinest ko yung katabi ko, makikita natin, galing din bang Taiwan yung ano mo, yung uh, COVID na nakuha mo o galing dito sa isang pwesto. That's why we're doing gene sequencing because with this, we're now using science para malaman natin kung talagang may mga relasyon and we have evidence to back us up if ever we will declare sustained community transmission. Ma'am, dun sa mga na dagdag po na PUIs, most likely because of gene sequencing, nakita nyo po na related po sila dun sa mga unang confirmed cases po natin. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, kung sakasakaling lumabas itong gene sequencing, hindi po siya patient under investigation. ha. Uh, linawi natin. Ang gene sequencing natin, yung mga positibong kaso. So ngayon, if we say we have 33 cases na total, itong 33 na mga kasong to ang lalagyan, gagawa natin ng gene sequencing at ito ang pag-aaralan kung may mga relasyon sa isa't isa. So kahit na yung kaso natin na uh, dati pa, no? maari nating isama para malaman natin kung may relasyon siya dito sa mga bago nating kaso. Uh, Sir Jovey. Ma'am, may initial information na tayo kung ilan yung mga cases na pwede natin malink doon kay case number 5 kasi siya yung pinakauna natin for local transmission. And ilan doon sa new cases yung kumbaga parang sort of imported dahil galing sila sa ibang bansa? Wala pa kaming impormasyon no, about yung uh, analysis mismo nung sa contact tracing natin. Uh, binubuo pa lang natin, although we've received initial information ule uh, already regarding uh, the numbers that were uh, assessed no, based on the tracing for contacts of uh, these different patients. Pero hindi pa rin natin masabi no, kung may relasyon sila, kung contact sila nung number 5, kung contact sila nung number 7 or number 8. Siguro in the next 2 or 3 days, malalaman po natin lahat and we can give you a tree no? para makita nyo na nagsasanga dito, maiintindihan natin lahat. Okay? As to the imported cases versus those na probably local or wala talagang pinag-originatean yung ating uh, sakit, uh, meron lang po tayo pa rin hanggang sa ngayon yung ating mga datos mula patients 1 to 10. Yung sinabi natin dati, no? Yung isa nag-travel ng Japan, yung isa nag-travel ng US and South Korea, yung, matan yung 86 years old. Uh, and then, uh, meron tayong mga initial na nakalap na informasyon galing dito sa patients uh, 10, 11 to 20 na we are still verifying and maybe by tomorrow we can already give you complete data. Okay? Bigay mo lang sa amin yung ngayon. Ayaw namin magbigay ng inaccurate ang data namin. Ma'am, may information tayo dun sa status ng mga elderly patients natin kasi throughout the day parang paulit-ulit na sinasabi na namatay na or... Oo, no? Meron tayo, no? Uh, hindi pa ho sila patay. Isa ho ating, uh, gusto nating klaruhin yan, no? So, yun pong ating mga pasyente, yung ating 62-year-old male uh, na patient number 6 at saka yung ating patient number um, 9. 86 years old male, pareho silang buhay pa ho sila, yung 62 year old male at saka yung 86 year old male, sila po pareho ay guarded ang condition. Ibig sabihin, uh, because of comorbidities o ibang karamdaman no, na nakasama dun sa kanyang pagkakaroon ng COVID-19, uh, ay mas uh, medyo critical ang kanyang lagay, lagay nila sa ngayon at binabantayang maigi sa ating referral hospitals. Ma'am, last na lang on my end. An ano yung uh, initial explanation natin ngayon kung bakit 
karamihan ng cases nasa NCR. Anong nangyayari din sa mga other major urban areas natin? Namomonitor ba sila ng maayos? Yes, sir. Uh, meron namang monitoring. no Sa araw-araw na pinapakita natin, sa NCOV tracker natin, nakikita po natin ang disaggregation of these patients under investigation being monitored every day and patients under monitoring across the different regional areas. Ang sa tingin ho namin, because the, dito tayo nagkakakita ng mga kaso sa ngayon, because of our main ports that are here, because of people flocking here, this urbanized city of uh, cities of Metro Manila, business, trade, and all. So baka ho, nandito ho tayo because of those reasons, but there can be other reasons as well. But as we see right now, no, yung sinasabi nga po natin, dun po sa NCOV tracker, makikita po natin that we are not missing out on the other regions. Meron pa rin naman tayo nakukuha na numero galing sa ibang region. Ang siguro magtataka tayo kapag zero lahat ng ibang region at nandito lahat ng monitor na person under monitoring and patient under investigation. Hi ma'am, good afternoon. Caroline Bonkin from CNN Philippines. Ma'am, baka, um, what can you tell us about patients number 21 to 33 po? Age, uh, gender, taga saan po sila if possible po? We will be releasing, just like yesterday, a table where will you, you will get our initial information for these different patients. But uh, let me just give you this uh, Ano bang tawag doon? Ah, clarification. Pag nagbibigay ho kami sa inyo ng mga table na ganito, ah, minsan kapag nag-verify kami ng further sa mga aming mga impormasyon with these patients or the contacts of these patients, may mga nababago. Okay? So, ibibigay pa rin ho namin sa inyo yun. Pero sana, klaro po yun sa ating lahat. Gusto lang namin makapagbigay kami sa inyo ng initial information. So, we have it here and it's going to be posted as well. Ma'am, ano po yung common symptoms among the positive cases? Still like that, no? Yung uh, ubo, sipon, lagnat, no? Uh, Ma'am Christine, then Sir Gerard, then you. Ma'am, can we get information on the earlier, yung mga four onwards? May mga nag-recover na po ba? And are we seeing parang signs na karamihan naman sa kanila is mild and mukhang marirelease din kagad? Meron na tayo po ay may mga data from patients 4 to 10. Uh, sila po ngayon, lahat po yan stable. No? Pag sinabi naman nating stable, ibig sabihin kung ano yung pinagmulan natin na simptoma so nagumpisa tayo, ganun pa rin hanggang sa ngayon. O kaya recovering, kaya stable po tayo. So I, all I can say right now, uh, these patients from patients 4 to 10, uh, most of them except for uh, our patients... Five and nine are all in stable condition. And patient 62 years old male, patient five and patient nine are both in guarded condition. Yung six po yung wife no five, okay din po. Yes, uh, patient six, uh, 59 year old Filipina, na wife ni patient number five is in stable condition. Ma'am, last na po, up to 20, karamihan mga lalaki, parang 75%. Yung Sumunod pa yung 21 to 33. Karamihan din po ba lalaki? And bakit po kaya ganun yung um, karamihan ng cases natin? Uh, dito naman sa patients 21 to 30, halo. 33, I'm sorry. Halo siya ng lalaki at babae. So minsan, uh, pag tumitingin po tayo sa epidemiology ng sakit o yung pattern o distribution ng isang sakit, at uh, gusto po nating uh, pag-aralan kung uh, ito ay mas madalas sa lalaki o sa babae, depende po sa sakit. No? Usually, sa isang bansa, ang lalaki ay mas nagtatrabaho, mas lumalabas, mas exposed. Minsan naman, sa ibang bansa, ang babae may mga ginagawang ganito, kaya mas exposed sila. So, maari po natin pag-aralan ng ganon, pero sa ngayon, hindi pa naman kumpleto datos natin, so wala pa po tayong ganong pag-aaral. Hi ma'am, good afternoon. Gerard po from Malaya. Ma'am, can you just uh, enlighten us dun sa sinabi po ni Secretary kanina regarding localized lockdown? And how far off are we from be, uh, being put into that situation? Yes, localized lockdown, sir, uh, means that you are going to lock down an area which is localized. Like, it's one part of a big area. Okay, so pag halimbawa, pwede mong sabihin, uh, this is city A, this is city B, this is city C. And the whole area is one whole, maybe region, uh, Roman numeral number one. 
If I say localized lockdown, I localize and I shut down only or lock down only uh, city A, but not B and C. So that's, that's what you mean by localized uh, lockdown. Ngayon, dumadating po tayo sa punto ng lockdown when you are already in code red alert sub-level 2. Kapag meron na po tayong sustained community transmission, uh, dyan na po papasok itong strategia na ito na pwede nating i-employ. Paano po yung operation po nun? Uh, so people won't be allowed to go in and out? Yes sir, that's, that's what happens when you lock down an area. Bawal pumasok at bawal lumabas ang mga tao. Thank you. Ma'am, good afternoon. MJ po from GMA. Uh, Ma'am, uh, tatanong ko lang po, ano yung protocol natin ngayon uh, sa pag-test considering that we have limited number of test kits as of now po? Still the same, ma'am. Uh, yung testing kits na yan, sinasabi limited, it's adequate as of now based on the current number of cases and number of uh, requests for testing. No? Uh, meron ho din tayong forthcoming deliveries na magkakaroon tayo. Meron ho tayong in-process na procurement. And of course, we are trying to coordinate and uh, partner with uh, agencies and abroad so, mabigyan pa tayo ng iba pa. So, for now, it's adequate. Opo. Uh, Ma'am, if possible po, how much po yung cost sa ating um, diagnostic procedure po? And um, do we need additional budget po for testing? Ang isang test ay uh, hindi naman ganun ka-accurate ang estimation kasi ginagawa sa isang gobyernong pasilidad, katulad ng RITM. So, yung cost namin might be so different when you go out and uh, have it in the private. Pero sa ngayon, kami po ay nakaupo na at nakapag-request na ng mga budget na extra para makabili tayo ng mga kailangan para ma-expand ang capacity ng ospital, ng laboratorio, para makapag-strengthen uh, tayo lalo ng ating surveillance. So ito naman ay ginawa kanina pong umaga sa House of Representatives na kapag approve po tayo ng amount of money uh, na pwede na nating magamit. No? And also, meron na hong pledges. Even the President last night has been the one na nag-announce no, na meron kaming ganitong pera coming from an agency of government and another from another agency of government. So lahat po ito, nagtutulong-tulong lahat ng ahensya para meron tayong kaukulang budget sa mga pangangailangan natin sa sitwasyong ito. Ma'am, last na lang po sa akin. Uh, ano po yung tips natin sa mga commuters natin na medyo nahihirapan na ipractice ang social distancing po? Yes, uh, especially pag LRT. No? So sa ngayon, uh, pinag-iisipan na ho, meron ho kaming uh, technical advisory group Ang tawag, mga eksperto, tinitignan ho natin yung mga experiences from other countries kung ano ang pwede natin gawin no? para magkaroon po tayo ng infection control procedures in our uh, different uh, transport uh, types. No? Katulad LRT, jeepneys, tricycles, and all. So dito po naman sa mga jeepneys and ano, meron na ho kami binabalak. We like to sit down with operators of buses, jeepneys, para po maturu maturuan natin sila on what they are supposed to do. Especially during these times na talagang kailangan talaga yung ating infection control procedures. And LRT, we will be sitting down with them so that we can employ also these infection control procedures like having guns dun sa pagpasok or maybe uh, the uh, sanitiz uh, sanitizers and alcohols uh, in different or strategic areas in that. Ma'am, yung current inventory ng testing kits ng RITM? Current inventory is about 2,000. A little above 2,000. Tapos ma'am, yung testing kits from UP, pwede na rin po yung gamitin ba ng ibang mga ospital? The rapid testing kits from UP is different from what we have with RITM. Yung testing kits natin or kits natin from RITM, ang ginagamitan po nito yung PCR, yung RT-PCR na equipment. Itong rapid testing kit is just a kit na gagamitin at uh, gustong ipatupad, no? gusto nating ipatupad sana kung maaaprubahan na uh, galing po sa UPNIH. So dito po sa atin kela sa UP, uh, dito po sa rapid testing kits, I'm sorry, hindi pa po natin pwede gamitin. Pinag-uusapan pa po natin yan kung ano po ang gagawin natin. Although FDA already gave their certificate of eligibility and exemption, may isang step na lang po tayong inaantay and uh, magdidesisyon na po ang Secretary of Health natin. Ang kailangan i-approve ng WHO? 
yung rapid testing kit? Hindi naman sa hindi ina-approve, pero uh, kailangan kasi mailista siya dun sa emergency use listing ng WHO. Ang merong tayong rate limiting step na parang merong silang kailangan na i-comply kung saan kailangan pang kunin sa ibang bansa no yung para doon sa uh, requirement ng WHO na yon. So that's a step na pinag-uusapan ngayon ng both WHO, DOH, at saka nung mga gumagawa nitong rapid testing kits na to. Ma'am, ano ma'am yung mga referral hospitals na, na pwedeng uh, mag-handle ng COVID cases? Lahat po ma'am, everybody. Lahat po ng levels 2 and 3 na mga ospital, both public and private, dito sa Pilipinas, based on standards for licensing, should be capable of managing COVID-19 cases. Ngayon po, meron lang tayong mga itinalaga na mga referral hospitals for severe cases of COVID-19. You can bring patients, ang usapan, para hindi tayo nagkakaroon ng overloading para sa severe cases, sa RITM, sa San Lazaro Hospital, and sa Lung Center of the Philippines. Yan po ay may polisiya tayo doon. For the rest, mild cases can go to them. Ma'am, sorry, um, guidelines po for home quarantine. How do, how do people do it? Meron po tayong guidelines na pinalabas for home quarantine at uh, i-shinare natin sa lahat. No? But for home quarantine, of course, yun ang pinaka-importante pa rin. Kapag ikaw ay umuwi, may simptomas ka, at uh, sa tingin natin ay related sa COVID-19, uh, kailangan po mag-isolate kayo, ihiwalay ang mga kutsara, ang mga plato, ang mga baso, and most uh, parang at the very ano, kailangan hindi ka nakikipag-interact sa pamilya mo. Kung hindi may iwasan, may simptomas ka, mag-mask ka sa loob ng bahay nyo. But still, minimal pa rin dapat ang pakikipag-interact. Kung wala po kayong sariling kwarto, use a mask if you're symptomatic. Ma'am, last na po. Ma'am, are we concerned about the possible spread of COVID-19 in depressed areas na limited po ang resources for sanitizers, alcohol, etc.? Nandun lagi yung threat na yon, ma'am, kahit hindi sa COVID-19. No? Lagi naman natin gustong alagaan at gustong tutukan ng mga ganitong lugar sa ating bansa. So sa ngayon po, kapag kaganyan, lalo na ngayon, naghahanda tayo, isa po sila sa binibigyan nating focus ngayon kung paano natin gagawin yan if and when dumating tayo sa punto ng sitwasyon. Thank you. Ma'am, from case three, one. Um, last three questions, please make it quick. From um, case number one, sir, port. then ma'am, then Sir JC. Hi, ma'am. Good, uh, good afternoon po. Uh, John Eric Mendoza po from, uh, for Manila Times. Um, uh, po, galing lang po sa desk, pinapatanong po if uh, possible po na magkaroon ng reinfection among uh, doon po sa 33 cases as observed in Japan. Uh, po. Dati pa ho si nasabi yan, no? yung recurrence, reinfection, okay. ibig sabihin umuulit yung infection, nagnegatibo ka na. Pero hanggang sa ngayon po, wala pa ho tayong enough evidence no? to say na meron talagang ganitong sitwasyon or ganitong nangyayari talaga na nagre-reinfect tayo. No? So hindi pa ho natin mabigyan ng kasagutan yan sa ngayon. Opo, so uh, uh, ma'am, nabanggit niyo po kanina na pinag-aaralan niyo po yung mga data na pumapasok as of the moment. Uh, In following days po ba, madedetermine na po natin kung uh, makakapag-declare na po yung ahensya ng community transmission? Definitely, sir. Is isa po yan sa objective namin. No? Na kaya namin gusto mapag-aralan agad-agad lahat ng datos. Gusto natin hindi tayo mahuli na makapag-declara ng ganito para yung response natin mas maitataas pa natin. Uh, po, last question na po. Sorry. Uh, meron po kasing mga napapabalita. Uh, gusto, gusto lang po sana namin ni-clarify kung yung uh, sa Manila, sa kondo, sa pandakan po ba yun? Kasi kagabi po may nabalita po kami na parang uh, nagpapanik po yung mga tao doon na parang nag-aal sa balota na po yung iba. Tulad po ng sabi natin kahapon, no, uh, kapag pwesto po ng mga ospital, ibibigay namin sa inyo. And then after we declare, we give the authority to our local government units for them to verify and give information for these specific addresses of their constituents who are COVID-19 positive. Good afternoon, Ma'am. Gina Mapi po ng DWWW. Doon po ba sa tatlong po, tatlong bilang na yon ng bagong kaso, kasama na po ba yon doon yung isang police ng San Juan at saka dalawang na uniform personnel ng APD? Uh, wala pa po kami nakukuwang balita as to their occupation. No? Uh, yun pong ating mga datos, katulad ng sinasabi natin, kinakalap pa lang namin sa ngayon. Maaring bukas po, meron na po tayong informasyon uh, na katulad niyang sinasabi niyo. Okay, thank you po.
Ma'am, from case number 1 to 20, ang pinakabata po is 24 years old. Bakit po uh, mga adults at hindi mga bata ang uh, madalas na tinatamaan po ng COVID-19? And um, what time po yung possible na send-off ceremony po tomorrow noong uh, NCC repatriates po natin? And open po ba siya for coverage? Meron pa? Yan na yun na. <laughs> Okay. Uh, bakit uh, matanda? Uh, alam naman po natin, ano, kahit anong sakit, ang matatanda are the most vulnerable. Kasi po, usually, most often than not, ang matatanda, may kaakibat na na ibang sakit. So, mas vulnerable po sila sa sakit. At pag tinignan po natin ngayon ang datos ng ating COVID-19, makikita natin na malaking porsyento po nung nagkakaroon ng COVID-19 or naapektuhan ay ang ating matatanda. What time po ang send-off natin bukas sa New Clark City? Hindi po namin pwedeng sabihin sa inyo. Uh, this is quite confidential. Meron lang tayo magaganap na maikling seremonyas. Uh, pagkatapos po, they would be sent off already para makauwi sa kanilang bahay. Not for coverage. Not for coverage. Ha? Walang nag-positive? May... Tatlo? Meron, di ba? Patients 25 and 26. They are asymptomatic. Apparently, but we still need, as I've said, we we are now validating the information, getting the complete history. Asik. Sorry, that's all the time we Asik. have for now. Last question um, lang po. So, Asik for clarification, paano po yung scenario na pag iaakyat yung sub-level 2? We expand. No? Ano daw mangyayari dun sa ating mga hospital? We expand. No? And pag-usapan na natin ngayon na yung paghahanda na mag -e exceed ng ating mga hospital sa kanilang usual or regular na capacity and we call it surge capacity. Uh, so itong mga hospital natin na ito, magtatalaga na tayo kung ano dapat ang magtatanggap ng ganitong klaseng pasyente, ano dapat ang ganitong pasyente, mag meron na ho tayong uh, initial stages ng paghahandang ito kung saan uh, inutusan na ho natin ang ating mga gobyernong uh, ospital na simula sa, I think yesterday, wag na muna magtanggap ng private patients. Itira muna yung mga private rooms natin sa bawat ospital natin na gobyerno to serve as isolation rooms. So isa na ho yan sa paghahanda natin in preparation if we will be exceeding our original capacity and we will go into surge capacity. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for coming. That's all the time we have for now. Um, I will let you know again when our next press briefing will be. Thank you. May ano po yung opinion ng DOH? Kasi meron pong reports na may mga companies daw po na nagla-lockdown na. Hindi naman lockdown ang kompanya. Parang yung iba nagsara, yung iba nagkaroon ng kaso. And I think this is just a miscommunication o hindi pagkakaintindihan. Yung iba pong kompanya, pag nalaman na may isa silang empleyado na may sakit, isinasara na ang buong kanilang kompanya na hindi naman po dapat. So, iyan po ay nakikipag-coordinate tayo ng maayos sa ating mga companies na ito. And nananawagan po kami sa mga kompanyang ito kung kailangan nyo po ng tulong para sa guide Guidelines kung paano natin gagawin yung uh, kung meron kayong positibong kaso sa inyong lugar, maaari po kayong tumawag sa hotline namin at mabibigyan po namin kayo ng assistance. Asik, may possibility po ba na matransfer yung virus sa cash and nag-recommend na po ba tayo sa BSP na maglinis po ng mga bank notes po? Uh, well, uh, wala namang hindi posible sa ngayon, hindi ba? At katulad nga ng sabi natin, natatransmit siya sa fomite, so sa surfaces, Merong posibilidad, pero wala pa tayong sinasabing siyensyal uh, ukol dyan. No? no basis, no evidence to say that. Pero para sigurado, kaya nga lagi natin sinasabi, let's practice the universal precautionary measures. When you do that, and then your risk would be lower. Okay? We're sorry, we really have to wrap up. Thank you so much everyone for coming, and we'll see you again. Uh, we still don't have the time for, it, for tomorrow.